Hello, welcome to the Hobbitsmith Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Martinez. Today we have returning co-host Kyle Thompson and guest uh, Fort Worth Chris and Chris named Chris Powers. Wow, why am I getting tongue-tied today? We're going to run with it today. I'm just going to keep rolling. If you haven't heard the episodes, please go check it out. Uh, we talked about land, industrial investing, and $1.2 billion under assets, a, a, assets under management. Why am I getting tongue-tied today? This is crazy. I just did really good and now I'm messing it up. It's all good though. We're going to run with excited. it. But today is Deal Breakdown. We cover cool, interesting stories. Now, Chris has been in, in uh, doing real estate for over 20 years from single family to industrial. I'm sure he has a lot of cool, interesting stories for us, but I think he's got one good one for us ready to go whenever you're ready. <laughs> okay. So, real qu- so just tell you about a, a deal that we worked on. Yeah. Cool, interesting deal. Interesting story in real estate or business. Okay. I'll tell you just about the the deal that I think kind of catapulted my career and then okay. the, the kind of the deals that fell after that. But it does go back to land. This was 2010 and was super naive, uh, but had been developing some student housing by TCU and, and looked at this other part of town called West 7th, which if you've been to Fort Worth, it's a really thriving district. But back in 2010, it was on the up and up. And I didn't even know what land assemblage was at the time. I just knew what big developers were looking for. And so we put together, we basically sent, we, we, we bought a, a gentleman who over 40 years had bought like, I think 26 homes or something, all contiguous. And then we assembled another six or seven around it and created this eight acre block in one of the hottest areas of the city. And when we bought it, we bought it for, I think our all-in basis to the dirt was like nine bucks a foot. We had cash flow coming in from all the rental houses on top. And I honestly, like I knew what I was doing, but in hindsight, didn't really, like there were so many things I was naive of, but we thought, okay, well, we'll buy this and either we'll sit on it for three or four years, collect cash flow, and the land will probably be worth, you know, we were in at nine. I think we thought in a high case, we could sell it for 25 bucks a foot. And that was because, again, this was 2010, in 06, 07, 08, leading up to the great financial crisis, there was land that was selling for 30, 35 bucks a foot. So we were conservative and said, well, maybe we could sell this for 25 and we'll just either do that or maybe our development company will take off and and we'll develop the piece of land one day. And so it was 38 single family homes. Uh, I think some of them were zoned duplex, but it was pretty low density, but it was in a great area of town and i really didn't even know what zoning was or higher intenser zoning that just wasn't the plan but anyway about 60 days after we bought it we got approached by a group one of the biggest multifamily groups really now on the in the on the globe and they were like we want to buy this from you and um this was the biggest group i'd ever worked with at this time i was still a local real estate guy just doing small deals and i had a partner on the deal and i remember we sat in our office and we're like you think we should tell them that it's 25 bucks a foot to buy it? There's no way they'll ever pay that. And we called a friend who I'm so glad we did. And he goes, no, tell them, tell them it's $50 a foot. And again, we had owned this for 60 days, bought it for nine bucks a foot and thought in five years, maybe we'd get 25. And I only say the numbers, not to say we made a bunch of money that that happened, but it also is an insight into how land really works. So we told them 50 and I think we settled at like 48 bucks a foot. Now that took 18 months to do. So this is where I really got my education. We had to rezone all the land. There was a road that ran through the middle of it that we had to get the city to basically vacate. There was a sewer line that ran out to Lake Fort Worth, which was where a lot of uh, the city's water comes in from. So you couldn't build on top of that sewer line. Again, when I bought the land, didn't even pay attention to it. But for entitlements, we had to figure out how to build a bridge over it. Had to sit in countless zoning meetings and city council meetings for 18 months. It was just a very difficult, it was a, even though it was eight acres of all these homes, it was just a very complex transaction. And and the guy that ran the company that, that bought it from us, he's still a great friend today. All I asked him when we did it, we became friends throughout the deal was, to the extent you can help me, I was young. I think I was 23, 24 at the time. Will you just teach us what you're doing and how this all works? And after 18 months, I tell people like I got my MBA. Mm -hmm. And so what I learned quickly was one, 
buying unentitled, taking what I guess you'd call entitlement risk, which is buying unentitled land and then taking the risk that once you own it, you can get it entitled for higher and better use yeah. have created some of the, the biggest IRRs or multiples on a deal. It's obviously a lot riskier. Yeah. You know, I know people that have bought unentitled land thinking they would entitle it and they never could. But once we did that, we realized, oh, wow, there's a lot of benefit to this. How could we go find other uh, potential multifamily sites that people aren't seeing and put them together? And so when I told you we were doing a lot of land, it was all urban infill land. But we spent the next three or four years assembling sites all over DFW, taking entitlement risk, or we built relationships with developers and they would kind of say, hey, if you'll go buy, they couldn't hold land on the books. Hey, if you'll go buy that deal, we'll work with you on entitlements. We'll pay you this once it's all entitled. So <clears throat> anyway, it just set off a, a, a huge, uh, you know, wave of business, learned a ton about how cities work. You know, often entitling land, especially in the middle of a, a big city is a lot like being a politician. Mm -hmm. um, you have to hold a lot of hands and make sure everybody's happy. But it's a deal I'll never forget. It really kind of catapulted our career. I got to see how the big companies worked and looked at things. And the and the funny thing is, I remember thinking after they paid us whatever it was, forty six or forty eight dollars a foot, I thought, "There's no way in hell these guys are going to be able to make any money." They just paid me some crazy number. So I think they closed on the land in two thousand twelve, built four hundred units on it, and I think they made like fifty or sixty million bucks when they ended up selling it. And it, again, it just changed my mind that there's just such a bigger world out there. And when you sell to bigger groups, they have cheaper cost of capital. They have different return thresholds they need to meet. They have way more scale and they can get their costs down when they're building. They just have so many advantages. And so I think leaving that, I really realized we need to get the business as quickly as possible to a place where we're dealing with those types of folks. Because also bigger deals, they don't take, they take the same amount of time as smaller deals but they also have some of the most, the smartest people working on them. So the best architects, the best brokers, the best lawyers, the best companies. So the, the, the talent that works on big deals is, is, is much higher often, not always. And so there's just a lot more resources to get them done. And so it was just a, it was a great land deal. We made some good money, but it was really a deal that kind of, I would say changed my career. That is amazing. I'm, I, I think, I would I I would love to have gone through that that land journey. I'm going through it now. Like we've we've gone wow. through some sediment stuff now, but I would have loved to have gone through that when I was 23, 100. Because you learn so much. You learn so much going through that. Everything you learn you learn so much. And if your exit can be to a big company, whether it's a public company or private, there's just so much more opportunity. And 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 again, those companies are not in the business of assembling land and taking a bunch of entitlement risks like. And, and a lot of the companies, their their documents say they can't. They have to buy land once it's entitled and sh what they call shovel ready, ready to go. Yep. And they're willing to pay you a premium to be the person that takes that risk on their behalf. The caveat to all that, if, if you're listening to this and you're going to go do one, is buying the land and part of your assumptions is we're never going to be able to get this entitled. So are we comfortable owning the land at the basis that we're in or are we going to take some huge loss selling it? Um, I would never encourage anybody to go overpay for land, hoping for entitlements. You always have to still buy it at a price that makes sense, kind of the way it is in its current form. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to, yeah. I, like one thing we do, especially when we buy stuff, like we buy bigger stuff is we already know what's the worst case scenario exit. We're still going to make money. Yeah. Okay. Then let's, let's, let's dive a little deeper and see if we can get a huge multiple on this and see if we can have fun doing it. What kind of land do y'all buy? We buy a uh, rural, rural vacant land, uh, large acreage, uh, usually okay. outside the city. Using for like home development or just split up into ranches or we know. do we do ranches and home development is what our niche okay. is. So we'll buy big land, do ranches. If ranches are always our go to if we need to exit, but if we can and it has water access, we'll do home development. So we own we currently own four hundred acres of uh, land, two hundred acres we're turning into one hundred eighty home sites. And then the other 200 are returning, returning into ranches. So it really depends on how close we are to the city and access to utilities. I love it. It's it's such a fun model. It's such a fun model. And then we do bigger land deals with bigger people that do bigger operations. So we're not selling desert squares. We I tell I tell people I like investing in land where people want to buy land. Like 
don't yep. invest in land in the middle of nowhere. Like you want to do it where people want people want it. It's a great business. Land is such a great business. I love I love the uh, the deal the deal you brought today. Is the land deal? It's amazing. I love it. Land guys, I, lo- I love the opportunity land provides. So for everybody here, where can people find you online? This has been a great episode. I know you got to go, so let's let's end it here. This has been a great episode, though. This has been awesome. I, again, I really appreciate you guys having me on. I'm rooting for you. You can find me on Twitter at Fort Worth Chris. You can check out my podcast, The Fort Podcast. Uh, it's on all the major platforms, interview entrepreneurs, leaders in business, I've done 350 episodes, or you can visit our website, fortcapitallp.com. Go check out the other episode too. It was really good. This has been a really good episodes. For everybody here, go like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks guys. Hey, if you'd like to meet us in person, we do an annual event every year, thehiveislive.com slash summit. We'll see you there. Have a great day.